Hey what's going on guys, today I'm going to be showing you some OBS Studio settings for local recordings. I personally use these for recording pretty much all of my videos. They use the NVENC encoder, which means it's extremely resource efficient on your PC, but also that means you have to have an NVIDIA card to use these settings. If you have an AMD card, you will have to use some other settings, I'll leave a link to my x264 settings in the description below. And also there will be another link to my other NVENC settings that are not quite as high quality, but they are slightly more resource efficient. And also they have a smaller file size. So if you don't have a, a, a second hard drive to record to, or your hard drive isn't very fast, then you might have to use those settings because these settings produce really large file sizes and some people's hard drives might not be fast enough. That said, most hard drives nowadays will be fast enough, but if other things Things are running already on your hard drive, it might bottleneck and not have the same amount of speed as the hard drive would if it's a dedicated recording hard drive. That said, my other NVENC settings are extremely high quality and you won't be able to tell once uploaded to YouTube at all that they were recorded differently. It's just that these are a slightly higher quality, so I just prefer to use these settings anyway. One more thing before we hop into the video, any questions and stuff, leave them in the comments below. If you have another idea for a tutorial on OBS Studio or OBS Classic, just leave it in the comment section below. I will get to those comments. Sorry if I take a few days to reply. I do have a main channel that I'm running. You can find that link also in the description. Anyway, let's just jump into a new profile. You can name it anything you want. I'll name mine tutorial. Let's go and hit the settings button and the general tab. You don't have to change anything, neither in the stream because these are for local recordings. Do not use these to stream. Then you have the output tab. Change that mode to advanced and go into the recording section. So we're going to leave the type on standard. The recording path is where your video will save. As I mentioned earlier, I'd recommend that you have a dedicated recording hard drive if you're using these settings since they do produce a really large file size or if you just have one really fast hard drive then you can use that but also they do take up a lot of space so make sure you have enough space on that hard drive and also make sure it has a fast enough write speed so it can handle this you can also generate your file name without a space if you want next we're going to change the recording format to mp4 this is the format most used by pretty much everything nowadays pretty much everyone uploads to youtube in this format and also this will save a bit of time when exporting if you're going to export to an mp4 file anyway there's one disadvantage if your computer crashes or OBS studio crashes then the entire file will be destroyed so if you're recording for an extremely long period of time and you're worried about something happening then just stop and start the recording again then you won't have lost everything you'll just lost the little bit of part since you've last stopped recording now here under the audio tracks you can check what audio tracks you need now this really depends on how you personally have your audio set up to record if you want to know more about this and how it all works I have have a tutorial coming soon about recording multiple audio tracks using OBS Studio. Now personally I need audio tracks 1 and 2. 1 is for my game sounds and 2 is for my microphone. Next under the encoder we're going to use NVENC for the best performance. I already said this, it's in the title. Basically this format allows you to record with barely any frame impact on your game because it does most of the processing with your graphics card instead of your processor. Now you don't want to rescale output here. If you're going to scale your output do it in the video tab and we'll get to that in a second. And also we don't need to use any of these settings here. So rate control we're going to put on CQP which stands for constant quantization perimeter, which basically instead of setting a certain data rate for the video to record at, you set a certain quality that it records at. And basically it'll use as much data as it needs to achieve that quality. Basically that's pretty similar to CRF if you know what that is. And the reason we're not using CRF is because OBS Studio does not have support for CRF when using the NVENC encoder. Now CQP, this is the quality that you will be achieving with your video. The lower this number, the higher the quality, the higher the number, the lower the quality. So if you set it to zero, it'll record at lossless quality. I'd strongly advise against it as the file size will be extremely huge and also most video editors and stuff like that will have a hard time reading the file. So I'd recommend setting it around 12. You can play with this number. 16 is also really good quality. Once you get around 20, the quality starts noticeably getting lower. And I really wouldn't recommend setting the number anywhere below 8. Because in my experiences, I haven't noticed any higher quality if you set this anywhere below the number 8. And also, the file size starts to get extremely large. Like I said, I'd recommend you start setting this somewhere around 12. Next, I'd recommend you leave your keyframe interval on auto, which is 0. The NVENC preset, you can change. Honestly, I haven't 
haven't noticed too much of a difference between these. One that a lot of people use is Blu-ray. Do not use Blu-ray because that does encode slightly differently and any quality gained from recording at Blu-ray will be lost when either you render it in your video editor or upload it to YouTube. So I just recommend you use high quality. High performance doesn't really make a difference. Next make sure you put your profile on high. Now your level you should set to for around 4.2 for 720p and 1080p recordings. Honestly, it doesn't matter too much, but if you're recording at higher than 1080p, then I definitely recommend leaving it on auto because it won't record if you select a number that is too low for the recording. And I have dealt with that problem before and just leaving it on 4.2 because that's what I use to export in. So it does make exporting very slightly faster. Next, you want to uncheck two-pass encoding for two reasons. First, CQP is designed for one-pass encoding, and also it won't really improve the quality, but will cause you to drop a few more frames in-game. So basically just don't use two-pass encoding because it really doesn't help anything, at least with these settings. Next, you can change what GPU you want to use to do the processing. If you don't have multiple GPUs, then you have no use in setting this. So I have just one graphics card like most people. So I, you'd leave this set to zero. So if you have multiple graphics cards, you can change which one it uses. Basically, if you don't know, leave it on zero. For 99.9% .9 of people, they will all leave it on zero. Next, we have this audio tab up here and you will want to change all of these bit rates to 320 because for local recording, there's no reason not to record to 320 and just get that little bit of extra audio quality in. So now we have the audio settings here and definitely make sure to change the sample rate to 48 kilohertz. It will provide higher quality audio, but you will have to restart the program. So just do that re real quick. Okay, I'm back. I've restarted OBS Studio. I don't know why you have to restart OBS Studio to change the sample rate of your audio, but you can see there is no longer the warning here. Channels, I just recommend you leave on stereo. Desktop audio device, this is where you would choose your headphones or your speakers or wherever you're listening to audio. Basically, this is like the game sounds if you're playing a video game that it will record. Desktop audio device too, if you have a second pair of headphones or speakers, if you want your headphones and speakers, if you change which one you use, you can select that here. And then you also have options for three microphones or auxiliaries. Basically just select your microphone that you will use to record and you can choose up to three of them if you have multiple. If you don't know what devices to choose, then I do explain more in my video where I talk about recording to multiple audio tracks in OBS Studio, so you can go and watch that video. It's in the description. Next down here, you have some push to talk and push to mute. I just recommend not using those. Next, we have the video tab here. You can first set the canvas resolution. Basically, you should set this to your monitor's resolution. If your monitor is not 16:9 aspect ratio, then set it to the 16:9 equivalent of your monitor's resolution. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then I do have plans to make two more tutorials talking about what resolutions you should use in OBS Studio and why, and also another video about resolutions in general. But these might not be made for a while, so basically just leave what it has in by default here and then worry about your output scaled resolution. And basically this is the resolution of your recorded video. Remember when I said back in the output not to use this rescale output, this is why, because you do your scaling here and then you don't have to do it here, which will give worse quality scaling and also take up more resor computer resources. So you'll get worse frame drop if you were to use this rescale output here. So basically for this output scaled, you can enter a number in manually, but the list does have pretty much anything that you would want to record to. So 1280 by 720, which is 720p, uh, 1920 by 1080, which is 1080p, or you can go higher than 1080p if you have a, a monitor that's higher than 1080p like me, Mine's 1440p, and then the next one up would be 4K if you were to have a 4K monitor. Basically, I'd recommend most people record in 1080p. That's what I record in, and that's pretty much what most people record to for YouTube. Or you could record to 720p, which a lot of people also record to. So 1280 by 720 is 720p, 1920 by 1080 is 1080p, 2560 by 1440 is 1440p. A lot of you will not have monitors higher than 1080p, but basically never set your output resolution to higher than your base resolution. If you set it to the same thing, like they're both 1920 by 1080, then do then choose this, the uh, bilinear downscale filter because you're not scaling your video at all. However, if, if you're like me and you need to downscale to 1080p, or if you're scaling from 1080p to 720p, then you can choose a different downscale filter here. I'd recommend using, I think it's pronounced Langsos. I'm not sure about that, but basically 
is the most sharp scaling. It has 32 samples and basically it would make your video look a lot better than if you use bilinear scaling. And also a lot of people like to use bicubic. It's not quite as good as, as Lynxos, but it is also still pretty good and it doesn't cause as much frame drop if you have quite a weak graphics card but honestly I haven't noticed too much of a difference but then again I do have a pretty beefy computer next you have your frame rates I'd recommend either setting this to 30 or 60 if you're recording gameplay I definitely recommend you record at 60 frames per second because it'll make this gameplay look the most smooth and the nicest but if you have a video like this I'm only recording at 30 frames per second since there's not a ton of movement and I don't need a really high frame rate also if your computer isn't very fast then you also might also if your computer isn't fast enough to run or record games at 60 frames per second then you can just use 30 frames per second so you will need to do a bit of experimenting with these settings but I definitely recommend that you record at 60 frames per second if you can because it looks a lot nicer next you have your hotkeys you can set whatever of these you want basically you might want to use keys to start and stop recording instead of hitting this button down here manually so you can set it to F9 by just clicking on the box and hitting F9 on your keyboard and then you can undo what action you just did. You can also clear it so you get rid of it or you can add two keys that will do the same thing and you can delete the other key. So the hot keys are pretty well done here. You can set all these keys here and it, if you want to know what they do, just look to the left and it'll say what they do. So last we have the advanced tab and I don't really recommend you change anything here. Definitely leave your process priority class on normal. If you change this, you can have some issues with it crashing and whatnot. For the renderer, just stick with using Direct3D 11. It gets better performance in OpenGL and OBS. I'm not sure why, it just does. Video adapter, most people won't be able to change like me, so just you can't do anything with it. Uh, the color format, leave on NV12. And your color space, you want to set to 709 for more realistic colors. Basically, if you left it on 601, uh, reds will look slightly more orangey and that's just not good so definitely just set it to 709 and it'll just make your colors look slightly better and the yuv color range just leave on partial full will make it more saturated uh, partial will give you a more realistic look next you can change some more settings down here like what you want the file to be named when it records you can choose to overwrite the files if the file already exists which i'd recommend not doing because then you might just delete some of your recordings by mistake and also you have the stream delay and automatically reconnect these are just if you're live streaming which we're not doing with these settings these are just for local recordings as i've mentioned quite a few times already so yeah that's it for this video i hope you do enjoy these settings i hope they are helpful for a lot of people again you can also check out my other settings i do have quite a few settings because different people need different things depending on their whole setup and you know their computer and what will work the best for them so again leave any questions comments ideas for more tutorials in the comments below and i will see you guys in the next video peace oh.